building of the National Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan located in the city of Nur Sultan is Central Asia's largest one. In addition, one can confidentially say that its appearance and inner content harmoniously intertwine together. Today we will have a talk with an artist jeweler, the director of the National Museum, Almaz Nuras Khan. Can all the relics located here tell about the complete history of the Kazakhs? The National Museum of Kazakhstan is quite special compared to other museums in the world, some of which contain only historically valuable artifacts. At the same time, there are modern museums in Seoul and Dubai digital ones that are created using modern technologies and there are a lot of them. What is the peculiarity of our museum? We made some synthesis, we combined these approaches. We present not only valuable historical relics, but elements of modern technologies to present information about our historical heritage. You have already seen the flying golden eagle at the entrance. Then you see the 3D halls made by modern standards. Another feature, if I'm not mistaken, is that the collected artifacts were found only on the territory of Kazakhstan. Yes, on the one hand, we are proud of this. However, if the relics are found elsewhere, that's good too. But today we don't have such items. Take the Hermitage or the Louvre. They store relics captured during the imperial period. Our museum stores relics that were taken from our land. Therefore, they are especially valuable for us. If we talk about relics from abroad, Last year we had exhibits brought from Egypt, as well as the Terracotta army from Xi'an. They are exhibited for several months. Such items seem special to us, because there is nothing to compare with. Our people saw these exhibits, but when they were taken away we realized that there was no difference in the value of local relics with foreign relics. We were very proud of this fact. When there is nothing to compare and everything is in its place, then you don't notice much, because you see the same thing every day. And when something is brought from abroad, everything seems interesting. You come, you look, but when they leave, you return to your relics and think. You understand that they are both important historically. Many values established under the state program Cultural Heritage constitute the invaluable foundation of the National Museum. What are you doing to return exhibits related to the Kazakh history from abroad? This question is common with many countries, but I think the time to unify efforts will come. There are valuable Kazakh artifacts in Omsk, Chelyabinsk, Kugan, Kunstkamera and the Russian Geographical Museum. And this is only in Russia. There are our exhibits in Xinjiang and Urumqi as well, in Tashkent too, and I'm talking about what I saw personally. I talked for a long time with the Afghan Kazakhs and with the Kazakhs from Mongolia. There is a goal for today to return everything. But this is impossible, because each country has its own laws. And if we had foreign relics, we would not give it away either. In Russia there is a decree that says, everything that is displayed in the museum is state property and is not issued to anyone. This is not only in Russia but also in Europe. For example, in the Hermitage I saw two Turkestan lamps. In Turkestan there were once seven lamps. It turns out two are in the Hermitage and one in the Louvre. I saw another miracle in the Kunz camera. Awesome Saukile. But we cannot return all this, we can only try to make copies. There are Kazakh weapons, horse harness, 
all in very good condition and we know about all this. But in the future I think everything will come back. Guests of our capital who come both from Kazakhstan and from abroad can get acquainted with the whole history of our people here. What valuable relics are collected in the National Museum? First of all, as you have already noted, we often welcome guests from other cities of Kazakhstan. Wherever you go, you will do the same. Let it be a tourist or a local visitor from the province. They still go to the museum, because the museum is history. State history, history of the world. All major museums in the world attract both locals and foreigners. Take the same Hermitage or the Louvre. Therefore, today we are bringing our national museum to a similar level. We have the most valuable exhibit, Golden Man. Because it is our main character, it is considered sacred. We called him Kazakh Tutankhamen. Now this name is known abroad too. The quality of performance and metal processing allow scientists to equate the golden products of ancient nomads to the world masterpieces. Our golden man makes a tour visiting world museums. How many countries has it visited? As I remember, the tour of the Golden Man began in 1995. Then it visited many countries of the world, about 20 states. Under the program Rukani Jangiru, an even larger tour of the Golden Man around the world began. During these three years, we have already traveled six countries. We were in Moscow, Minsk, Baku. This year we visited Kazan and Uzbekistan. I once talked with the staff of the Archaeological Museum in Rome. And they told me that 20 years ago the Golden Man was brought to them, but without relics found next to him. And they asked to bring the Golden Man with items found with him. We plan a tour to Rome in 2020. And there is something to show. The main thing that impressed me is the fact that the Italians remember the events that happened 20 years ago. It means that our culture made an unforgettable impression on them. And they are glad that we are going to visit them in 20 years and they are waiting for this. I also received letters from other countries, from India, from the United Arab Emirates, from many others, and everyone wants us to bring the Golden Man. The Golden Man is an indisputable relic, but besides it, what other artifacts, in your opinion, could glorify Kazakhstan? To be honest, the Golden Man is number one. Now we say that there are seven of them. Guises of Golden Man was found in the West and in the East. I will tell you more about it later. Another valuable relic is the Tobolsk Finca. One of its features is its appearance, reflecting such a psychotype which is peculiar not only to the expanses of the Great Stamp. Artifacts with this kind of appearance are found all over the world, but we still cannot expose it because so far not fully explored this statue. But besides the Golden Man, of course, it is necessary to show the artifacts of equestrian culture. Today it is confirmed that 5,000 years ago horses were tamed by our ancestors and we find the artifacts confirming this on the lands of Botai. They too are the most important relics. The domestication of the horse gave our ancestors the unthinkable superiority at that time. On a planetary scale it triggered the largest revolution in the economy and military affairs. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, first president of Kazakhstan. Speaking generally, we have just now begun to discover the history of the Kazakhs, which is an innovation for us. In Soviet times, a book called The History of the Kazakhs was small, and now it contains several volumes. But historians say that this is not all. You have already mentioned several guises of the Golden Man. Will we see all of them in this museum? This is also an unresolved question. 
For me as the head of this museum, of course it would not be bad if they were exhibited here. People who are aware of the value of the artifacts will themselves ask to put them in the National Museum. But there are those who think that they are no worse and will ask for them. Of course I understand them and, on the one hand, it may be right. But how can they preserve these relics? Think about it yourself. The golden man that is stored in the district center, let's say in a sick, how many people will see it in the district center? And how many people can see it here? The difference is obvious, right? As I have already said, several golden man geysers have been found, and some of them are located in regional centers. But this, I think, is wrong. They should be in the National Museum. For example, the golden man from Chilik is located in the Central Museum in Almaty. And I cannot say anything against this, because Almaty is a megapolis. There is also Yeleke Saz, which stands in the Museum of East Kazakhstan. I do not mind, but it is a very valuable exhibit. True, I did not see it personally, but I saw photographs. Archaeologist Zainola Samashev said that it is no worse than the golden man found in a sick. And this relic is still there, the expedition is still ongoing. And Zainola Samashev told me that he gave it to the ust Museum. And now in Urja, the so-called Urja Pristis was transferred to our museum. It stands in one of our halls. Why should all the exhibits of the Golden Man be assembled here? Yes, because not only Kazakhstan citizens, but also foreign guests should see them, so that foreigners know what relics we have. Story museum exhibits is very complicated. But over time, new technologies come. Are they used in the National Museum? Storage at the National Museum is at a very high level. That's just now we are signing a contract with the Louvre with the British Museum. We are also negotiating with the most highly qualified foreign museums. Their first requirement is a rider. First, they send a rider to understand what opportunities we have in terms of storage to bring the exhibits. After all, their artifacts are very valuable and therefore we describe Describe everything in the rider. What is the temperature here? What are air conditioners? Ventilation? Is there drying and so on? After all, each museum has its own specific work, the nuances of which are described by this rider. And we send it to them. Then they rate us. And they rate us very highly, like a world class museum. And only after that they make a decision to expose the relics. This is very important for us. Why did I say that it is difficult to maintain serious relics in regional museums? The problem is in storage. We do not notice this, but the museum staff knows that storage is a very difficult process. I only doubt about this in regional museums. I have no other complaints. We have prepared a report about the National Museum. Let's watch it. The Golden Hall of the National Museum is a special place. It features the most valuable artifacts of gold and precious metals which were found on the territory of Kazakhstan. Every year the exhibition is replenished. Here it is possible to examine in detail the centers of culture of the nomadic tribe of the Saka of the early Iron Age. Weapons, ammunition, horse harness made in animalistic style, objects of ancient life. All these valuable artifacts were found in the Saka mounds. Golden artifacts and restored images of five out of the seven types of golden men are exhibited in our museum. I speak about it with a great pride. As it is known before, the territory of Kazakhstan was inhabited by ancient nomadic tribes. First of all, the Saka tribes, which were divided into several groups. In general, a number of such halls as Astana, independent Kazakhstan, ancient and medieval history, ethnography contain the most important and valuable relics telling the past and present of the Kazakhs. There are a lot of visitors. In 2014, on average, there were 200 visits per day. Now, up to 700 people come, because the interest is very high. Most often, guests from abroad are attracted by the ethnographic hall. 
where one can see the life, get acquainted with the traditions, history and chronicles of the Kazakh people. And seeing all this, the guests receive a lot of information. Before becoming the director of the National Museum, you worked on the development of the cultural sphere of our capital. Do you think now that enough attention is paid to this area today? From the very moment our Yelba Sea, Nusultan Nazarbayev, moved the capital, special attention is paid to the formation and development of this sphere. Indeed, I have been doing this for a long time. The Pyramid of the Palace of Peace and Accord, the Palace of Independence, the Opera House, the Academy of Choreography, which is popular all over the world, our National Museum the Presidential Cultural Center, which was reorganized into a military museum. And in fact, I have named only some of the centers which focus on the culture development. Looking at all the cultural institutions created in the city of Nur Sultan, it becomes clear how much attention is paid to this area. I always hear from foreign ambassadors and other foreign guests saying, you have built a city in the step in which, on the one hand, is the Eastern culture, on the other, is the Western culture. All this is intertwined in one city. How did your acquaintance with the capital begin? Primarily as a man of art. When building by Terek, it was necessary to develop its entire internal design. A famous artist, Yebola Tolebai, was then attracted to this process. Well, he in turn took me to the team, proposing to do a great design project. It was necessary to make a pedestal Ayala Alagan. There is an imprint of the palm in the very heart of the monument. When I arrived for the first time, only Baiterek stood on the left bank and there was nothing else. Then I didn't think that there would be such a city in this place. We then had one goal, to do our job. I had no feelings for this city, no confidence in it, and I did not think that my life will ever be connected with it. My biggest work, which I am very proud of, is in the residence of the President, in the library. This is a pedestal on which all state symbols of Kazakhstan stand. In each state there is such a place where state symbols stand. This is a holy place. I made a large pedestal. I personally believe that this is my biggest contribution to the formation of our state, because it is not just a stand, but a handmade product, a work of art. It is a subject of my special pride. Having made it, I reached a high level as a specialist. There are not many masters in Kazakhstan who know how to work with gold, but you are one of them. How hard is it? The master must have a talent and a certain kind of character. Working with gold and such precious stones as diamonds, emeralds and rubies is a very difficult job. Firstly, it is necessary to have profession and secondly, to have a certain inner world and spirit. Gold has special properties. There are many professionals who work with it, but only few of them can create something special. What do you pay special attention to when creating a piece of jewelry? The content or the shape? Many people mistakenly think that artists first of all do their work for themselves and then they boast about their work behind other masters. When I make a piece of jewelry, I put my whole soul into it. And secondly, my work should fit the person so that it harmonizes with the appearance of the customer. Now I am doing simple things, let it be a set of jewelry, a belt, 
women's earrings or a ring. But whatever I do, I do it individually for this or that person. I create it so that it resembles the appearance, status of a person. A decoration should reflect his inner world. Someone does it for the sake of money, someone for himself, and I do it for people. I also have creative works that I don't just invent. If, for example, I find a certain form, then I'm looking for a special person. Twenty years ago, I created products in the national style. My current work is modern. If it is possible to add national elements, then I add them. If not, then no. Because now there is a certain world trend, and I also try to be in the trend. There should not be only Kazakh, Italian, Turkish or Korean. There is a global trend, and it does not share according to the principle of national identity. My products are bought both in Europe and in Asia. People buy them everywhere because they like it. Then they only ask, who's the author? Then they learn that the author is the Kazakh master. As a jeweler, you worked in Turkey for some time, visited the United Arab Emirates and China. Having experience in these countries, how have you grown as a specialist? We have reached a very high level of being in these countries. Why am I saying this? Because in Kazakhstan we did not have such a level of art working with gold and diamonds. And it's hard for me to say when it will reach us. How do brands conquer the world? They have a unique feature. And certainly not the price. Gold and diamond jewelries in Kazakhstan are very expensive. But art is different. You know that gold and diamond products are very expensive. And if you add art, the price will soar even higher. The world has now reached this level. Therefore, since I'm a specialist in this field, I travel and work abroad. I still do this, although for one month, but I still go abroad to work. Because technologies change every day. Every day materials change. For that matter, I would say that both gold and diamonds change too. If you don't observe the trends every day, you can fall behind in development. Studying abroad is very useful and important because our population in Kazakhstan only reaches 18 million. And there are global statistics. As long as there are no 35 million people in the state, it cannot develop on its own. And we barely reached half of it. We wonder why Kazakhs are always primarily recognized abroad and only then they get recognition in Kazakhstan. This is such a paradox. For example, Dimash. He went to China, where more than 1 billion people recognized him, and as a result, he's recognized in the whole world. There are Kazakh chess players who became famous in other countries with a population of 40 to 50 million. Therefore, at first, they become popular abroad and only then return famous to Kazakhstan. I say all this to answer your question, what status have I achieved abroad? For example, Turkey has a population of 80 million people, along with tourists, of whom there are a lot of them, say 100 million people. And when you work for 100 million people, this is something special. Consumer level is very high. Take Dubai. Almost the whole world works there. In the midst of such a population, the level and popularity begin to grow. What is your artistic style? Since I'm a jeweler, a sculptor, I work mainly in graphic style. This is most likely a hobby for me as an artist. You draw for yourself, first create a few sketches. This is called heraldry. So I'm engaged in heraldic creativity. Medals, badges. For example, I painted the well-known emblem of 550 years of the Kazakh Khanate. And my last heraldic work is the Excellence in Culture badge. I create graphics. I'm not particularly engaged in painting. I draw according to the mood. 
Thank you for this interesting conversation. I wish you good luck in all your endeavors. Thank you.